This is the experiment on the Michelson interferometer. Um, the light comes in from the source here. It hits a half-silvered mirror here and divides into two. One goes through this uh, mirror and hits this reflecting mirror, comes back and comes out so that I can see the fringes when I look in here. I see the sodium light fringes now. The other path length goes through here, goes to this mirror and comes back. But since the p this path involves going through this mirror plate of glass twice, there's a compensating mirror, uh, compensating piece of glass here so that the light uh, has exactly the same path equivalent in, in both arms of the Michelson interferometer. This device changes the separation of the mirror and these two screws so that you see back here tilt the mirror. It's an adjustment now and I think it's uh, worth looking at the fringes from a sodium light first because it takes a while for the sodium light to warm up and so we're starting with that and then we'll go back and show how to adjust it. There are the fringes. Now I, they're fairly plain. Let me change the path difference between them and notice that they're beginning to get blurry. Now they're almost as blurry as they can. If I keep going in the same direction, they get sharp again. If I keep going in the same direction, they get blurry again, begin to blur out. That's because sodium, uh, the yellow light of sodium has two lines in it. And in some places, the maximum of one fall on the minimum of the other, such as here, whereas when they're sharp, the maximum of one fall very close to the maximum of the other, and the lines become sharp. By seeing how far it, one has to move the separation of the mirror to go from two sharp, two sharp or successive sharp positions, one can measure the separation of the two lines of sodium. And because there are two lines, this is a repeating thing. It's sort of a Fourier series with the two elements. That's not quite right, but it, it repeats, and you can get sharp to blurry and sharp to blurry. Um, I'll t take this out now, and we'll put the mercury light in. Um, I'll just undo this, and uh, it's hot. And then uh, show how to align it with a, an incandescent light. Here's the mercury light. Put the shield back on. Now, in order to use this, um, the Michelson, the two mirrors have to start out very nearly parallel, um, perhaps with only a slight angle between them. And one does that by setting up an incandescent lamp and then turning that on. And now you can see I'll put a, a pin right in front of the incandescent lamp, right in front of the mirror, and the t television camera can focus on that. Let's get it in there. That's pretty good. Uh, we just set it there. And now you can see a good sharp image. But what, look what happens to that image if I tilt this mirror a little bit. Notice that instead of being a single image of the mirror, it becomes a double image. And by adjusting that till I get the sharp, if I tilt it the other way, I again get a double image, a blurry image. But now I'm going to get the sharpest uh, image of that pin that I can see. And that then tells me that the two mirrors are almost parallel. Uh, I should be able to find the fringes in an adjustment near that. Of course, I have to do the same thing with the pin stuck in vertically like that. I won't do it. It's already in adjustment. Um, so the next thing I will do is take the incandescent source away and turn on the mercury light and set in a, uh, a filter which will isolate the mercury line. And I should have some fringes there. Um, let's see whether I do. Yes, I did. And now, by mo I just been, this is if I'd been a little further off adjustment. Notice how fine the fringes are. But I was able to, with the pin, get a close enough adjustment. As I make them more and more nearly parallel, the fringes get wider and wider. And I can tip it by t turning this other adjustment here. I can make the fringe is vertical, and now I have a set of fringes. These are the fringes which are due to the, the fact that the mirrors are almost parallel. I have, if these were the two mirrors, um, 
I'd have one, um, they're not in the same plane, one is behind the other, but I'd have them at a slight angle to each other so that in different steps along the mirror, there are different path differences, and that's what gives rise to the fringes. Um, and in order to see them, one's eye or the camera has to be focused uh, right on the mirrors, right on the plane of the mirrors. Of course, uh, one doesn't know where one's eye is focused, but the camera, of course, is. Let me get the mirrors more parallel by making the, getting the spacing between the fringes larger and larger. And finally, when they're absolutely parallel, I should see a circle. But now I, I would see the circle, but the camera has to be refocused in order to see that circle. Let's try that. There we go. You just pass through it. There are the circles. The, the two mirrors are fairly close together now. Let me increase the path difference between the two mirrors by pulling one of them back. And now you can see that the circles are finer. Um, one can use the circles to measure the wavelength of light. Suppose I turn this a little. Notice I get a dart going in, into the center and the number that disappear into the center for a certain distance of travel using this calibrated screw. That will tell me uh, I can, from that, I can calculate the wavelength of light. Of course, I'm going too fast now and simply counts one, two, three as they go through. If I want to now go to the parallel fringe, uh, the, not these are the parallel mirror fringes. If I want to go to the fringes due to um, a slight angle between the mirror, I can move one of these and refocus the camera on the localized fringes. And there I have the localized fringes and I can get them straight up and down. Uh, if I want to. And again, these, uh, the further away I am, uh, the finer they will appear. Uh, another thing that one can do with the Michelson, of course, is to look for um, um, the white light fringes. One might notice that one can also measure the index of refraction of glass. In fact, if I blow on that, you can see the fringes moving due to the air currents, showing that it it is sensitive to the index of refraction of the gas. Um, so now I will try and get the white light fringes, which have to be gotten uh, only when the path length difference between the mirrors is uh, virtually zero. That is, when the two mirrors not, are not separated um, like this, with one behind the other, but when actually they, they cross. So the first thing to do is to get the path length the same. I'll do that by setting this using a dividers and not touching the front surface of the mirror, but finding out just the distance there, going from the back, the back surface of this mirror in the center to the, this mirror. Well, this one is too far, so I'll bring it in to about the right value. I'll put on my glasses so I can see. And that should be fairly close to the um, right value about in there, that that just touches that one. So I should be able to see fringes with white light. But first I will leave the filter in. Um, see what nice fringes I have. Um, one might notice this effect. Um, if I go to one side, the fringes become curved. Notice that, the, that there is a curvature, especially you can see it on the inner fringes. If I go too far to the other side, where the mirrors are now too close together, they become curved in the opposite direction. So the place where I get the straightest fringes, which I just noticed was about here, uh, uh, should give me uh, the two mirrors uh, uh, with equivalent path length. So now I will take this away and put an incandescent light back up in here, essentially a white light and look, and I just barely see some fringes, because of course with the dividers I can't get it exact. I might have been, I knew I was close, so the thing to do is just to make small motions. Now they're clearer. If I'd been a little further away, I just you can hardly see the fringes there. Now I'll come a little closer, and the fringes become clear. If I keep making the mirrors too close, the fringes disappear. There's a very narrow range here, so this is somewhat like the effect of the sodium light, but since I have a continuous distribution of light, the band pass of this uh, filter here, uh, 
the fringes, once they've disappeared, will never reappear uh, because I can't ever get all the uh, fringes to coincide again with the continuous uh, uh, distribution of wavelength. But I can measure the band pass by going from one side of this to the other to, say, a half blurry to half blurry. And then if I want to get the fringes to an even broader ba band pass, that is namely white light without the filter, I find the central portion of this and take the filter out, and I should see some filter, some fringes there. In fact, I do. Uh, notice now I'm going to watch how little I have to turn this screw before this wide band pass disappears. And of course, if I was moving fast through there, I could miss them entirely. So once you get it close, you have to move the adjustment very close. Slowly. If I look in there now, in the television, I see black and white fringes. But if I look in, I see v brightly colored fringes um, with a fairly dark one in the center and getting cur both um, colored, more and more colored, and um, more and more blurry as I go to the edges. Um, these then um, show the, one can measure the band pass of the eye, I guess it would be, by using the uh, width of over which you can see clear fringes from white light. Uh, I think this demonstrates most of the adjustments that have to be made with the mirror. There are other, many other experiments one can do. Uh, one can look at the effect of quarter wave plate. One puts a polaroid, light, polaroid in here and a quarter wave plate in one arm, and one can see what the effect of rotating the polaroid is. But that does not show very well in the television camera, so I think this is all we'll show on this film.